welcome to lecture 6. In this lecture, we will discuss um, few fundamental concepts uh, which is required as a foundation of urban governance. In last week, that is in the first few uh, 5 lectures, we discussed um, basic terminologies, urbanization and urban governance and constitutional and legislative provisions. In this week, we are going to discuss few essential concepts uh, which is uh, basically foundation. Uh, for example, the, the understanding the people and the community, understanding land as a basic resource, understanding the environment as a basic resource, all these concepts we will discuss one by one in little more details. Uh, so, last week was a introductory in nature the discussion, this from today onwards we will enter into the discussion which will be uh, more descriptive and we will try to show as much as possible some cases, some examples so that you get the exact idea that how uh, uh, with the practice so that you can apply whenever you are in practice. So, today we will discuss the element of people and community which is uh, very important as a foundation of the governance. So, under that we will discuss the, the methods how a governance, how the people and the community can be understood properly, analyzed properly. So, basics of the demography, understanding of the economic and the social profile and we will also discuss that how to identify the excluded and the poor people in the local bodies and what to do. We will also discuss some amount of participation and response uh, strategy which is required and through some example we will also discuss the uh, concepts. So, let us start with the uh, people, the foundation of govern governance. Now, from the earlier discussions, we have uh, told you that uh, urban local government is formed through election and when we say election, it is the election elected by the common people that is citizen. So, without the common people, the, the urban local government does not have any existence. So, whenever there is a uh, minimum population, for some cases it is 20,000, for some cases it is 30,000. So, it uh, uh, that they, they, they become eligible to form a urban local government. So, people is the foundation or the bottom level of the government. So, they are making the government, they are representing the government. So, and you have seen that any government, it can be local level, state level or central level, whenever there are some problems or issues at the local level or any level, the government can change, government can face multiple uh, issues. Uh, so, it is very important to understand uh, your own people, your own communities and groups so that you can plan for them, so that you can make strategy from them and you can develop their areas and develop their basic services and improve their life. So, we are telling that is why the people as the foundation of the urban local governance. So, to have a broad idea about the people, we have to know that what are the basic uh, dimensions of the demography which we need to know. For example, the first element what we uh, consider to understand the people is the population structure. So, as you know that population is always measured by the census of India. Last population was done 2011, 2000 before that 2001, every 10 years we do the uh, population study and within population the breakup of population between male, female, breakup of age is very important that is starting from 5 year to 80 plus year, what is the distribution of the age. This will enable you to understand that what category of the age profile um, population is uh, predominant at your municipality and then you need to know the sex ratio, ratio that is the number of female per 1000 male population, male population this is important and then you need to know your data on migration, 
because every city have uh, the migrated population from the surrounding villages, from the surrounding smaller cities. So, migration data is very important. Apart from that, you need to know the cross section of the population in terms of the their, uh, their work or cultural background, these are also important. So, these are very important uh, 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 important dimensions uh, which will guide you to understand at least the basic information about your uh, population. Apart from the demography, you need to know the economic and social profile. When you say economic profile, you need to know the economic base. Economic base means the percentage wise distribution of primary, secondary and tertiary. You know that primary section, primary sector is the agricultural sector, secondary is the manufacturing and the industrial sector and tertiary is the business and the commercial sector. So, distribution if you see that distribution you will understand that how much urban uh, is that area. Apart from economic base you need to know factors like income profile that is the average income profile of the families in terms of income groups also you need to know income groups. When you see income group, there are usually various kinds of group. We uh, divide the income groups in terms of high, middle, low and also economically weaker section in sh short we are calling it EWS. So, higher income group in short HIG, middle income group in short MIG and low income group in short LIG and EWS. So, you can see a percentage wise breakup so that you can understand the what is the cross section of your population in terms of the income. Uh, income. So, economic base will give you uh, the data about the employment. With this another information is very important that is the uh, work particip participation rate or dependency ratio that means the, the percentage of the population who are basically working and non working that breakup will give you the level of unemployment uh, in that area. And with this uh, the income profile income group and also for the social profile and cultural profile you need to know the literacy. literacy level then SCST percentage then language and religion. Even though uh, uh, as a secular country uh, the religion uh, 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 religion do not make a very important a very uh, large uh, 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 impact in the overall development, but various religious group uh, might have separate kind of requirement in terms of the development. So, it is very important to see religion, language, liter literacy level, SCST proportion etcetera. And not only that you need to know the cultural dimensions for, for example, festival, food ritual all these uh, element so that you can have some idea about the population of your uh, municipality and what is their uh, expectation and aspirations. So, demography, economic and social profile these are very, um, uh, very uh, essential profile essential elements which you need to know. So, at the individual level you need some, some data. So, family level some data and also as community or city level you need some data. 
Now, the fact is that census of India gives data only as a city or as the word. So, they do not give data uh, family wise. So, as a counselor if you work as a elected representative or functionaries or urban planner or engineer you need to have some detailed information of your word. Sometimes the municipalities they do their own surveys, own uh, studies and apart from the census of India there are sample surveys. Please take a note of this by government of India there are organization like national sample survey organization. So, they time to time publish uh, some of the information which is not covered in the census of India. So, these two and apart from that government time to time also do uh, also conduct some economic economic census which gives more details about the economic and the social activities apart from the, sen the census of India. So, this is essential dimension we need to uh, study and you need to understand. So, let us take an example how uh, the cities they, ex they, they represent the cities basic dimension basic data about the population and their cultural uh, profile. Let me uh, tell you just one minute uh, about the excluded and poor uh, group knowing overall profile of the population in terms of demography and social and cultural uh, matters is one aspect you must do. But at the end of the day uh, as a public organization your focus of the development uh, is poor and the excluded group. So, we have mentioned poor and excluded group. So, poor means uh, the lower income group or economical weaker section and excluded are also poor, but who are uh, usually outside from the org developmental scheme. So, please give attention to this kind of people um, so that you can identify who are the excluded group, who are the poor group, who are not interested to come to uh, the urban local body or the ward committee level to express their need, but maybe they are they have some expectation. So, you need to identify them, you have to reach to them to identify or know their expectation, then only you can plan for some facilities and services. So, Having said that, let us uh, show, uh, let us uh, share an example of the city profile. Uh, it is taken from the smart city profile Bhubaneswar from the uh, government website. Now, you can see that how they uh, represent the demographic profile. So, here they are representing the municipal corporation population, the state population and Indian population, so that they can have some uh, um, comparison. So, here is the total population total population of the urban agglomeration, share of urban population in district that is also you can see if you are interested, growth rate yes growth rate is very important like from 2001 to 2011 and 2011 to further what is the percentage growth of the population uh, which the uh, particular city is facing. The area now area will in area and population this will enable you to have some idea of density. that means population density. So, density is nothing but population divided by area. So, if the area is square kilometer you can see the area as a square kilometer. So, the it will be expressed in people per square kilometer that means, if this is one square kilometer area. So, how many people are living within that square kilometer? So, this density factor gives you an idea that how congested your city overall is as a city how congested. So, this is very important also another very important criteria density is mentioned here then literacy rate SCST you can see the slum population breakup and working age group and it is comparison with, uh, comparison with the state and the urban areas. Similarly, uh, if we see the economic and the social profile you can see that per capita income, urban poverty ratio, ratio that is how much percentage of the people are coming under the um, um, as a economical weaker section, uh, unemployment rate during 2011-12 in terms of the percentage, work participation rate that is 35.55 percent of people are working, the adult population, the work status, the self employed, the, the type of work that is the self employed, regular wage earner and casual labor. Then you can see the 
uh, distribution between primary, secondary and tertiary, you can see that for particular this uh, city Bhubaneswar, the tertiary sector is the predominant sector. So, from this you can understand that this city depends largely on the business transaction and the commercial establishment for their job uh, generation followed by the industry and the manufacturing sector and the amount uh, in, um, in the primary sector that is the agriculture and fisher, fishery is very negligible less than 1 percent. And following that you can see other elements like number of uh, legislators, professional, technician, clerks, a percentage. So, from this you will have a cross section of, uh, of your municipality or your city, so that you can get some idea and plan for them. So, this is how we represent, I have just shown a typical example, very cryptic example, but when you practice in your urban areas or for the urban development, this analysis has to be done in much detailed manner. We will discuss this element. Um, whenever we will show some case study during our urban planning module. So, please keep a uh, note that we will discuss this uh, uh, how to make the social profile, economic profile and the demographic profile for a city uh, when we make a plan or we make a plan for a urban services. So, after that let me discuss some amount of uh, something uh, regarding the participants and, and response. Now, why we are studying the population profile, their economic profile, their social profile, demographic profile. The main reason of studying them in very details is that, so that we can reach to them for giving the better services for their upliftment. Now, in the beginning we discussed that response is a very important dimensions. and core value of governance, right. That means, your ability, here we mean response as your ability to respond to local problems. situations or a particular issues, right. So, so unless you know the, uh, the cross section of your population, you cannot respond. And apart from this problem, situation and issues, we need to plan for urban local bodies for their future and for this plan, we need their participation. Why? Because unless we plan appropriately and adequately, which is proportional and, uh, and uh, compliant with their requirement and demand, the plan will not be successful. We have seen in history that, uh, that we have done a lot of projects for the poor people and poor people have rejected those pr projects. We have done housing for the poor people and poor people have rejected those housing, because the housing is not designed as per their requirement and their aspirations. For that reason, we need their participation, their involvement, their access in our plan making mechanism. So, that participation is very important, not only the plan, also day to day service delivery. You know that a common citizens depend for their day to day service delivery, for example, water supply, sanitation, uh, solid waste management, for every service they depend on urban local bodies. So, for service delivery and for plan making, we need their participation, so that we can understand in better way their requirement and satisfy that. And if we can do that, the wastage will be less effectiveness and the outcome will be more, the image of the government will be better and uh, you will definitely get a sustainable urban development. So, with this I would like to share a theoretical model of participation that how uh, the urban local bodies and cities can make people involvement and what are the levels of the invol involvement. So, this model is given by one scholar called Einstein. This is called the ladders of citizens participation. Uh, there are 8 stages of the citizens participation uh, starting from manipulation, therapy, informing, consultation, placation, partnership, delegated power and citizens control. Let me uh, discuss from the bottom. So, manipulation is basically you are not 
making people participate participative you are not participating but you are manipulating the data so manipulating just data to show that you are uh, that you are making people participating but no it is not actually happening so it is uh, not actual participation therapy is that you perceive a problem you perceive a issue in local areas or you perceive a, a particular demand but you you, you don't talk to them you don't uh, listen to them but you call them and then you give some kind of counseling that okay we'll do this later on and you give some kind of um, um, uh, some kind of um, false promise and so that uh, they understand for time being that okay it will be done so that those kind of approach is called therapy so this is basically we called as non participation and that should not be continued or that should not be practiced in in real form second is that informing you are planning something or you are doing something for the citizen you are informing them via electronic media via print media or any media okay but you are not actu actually info involving them in the plan making or the decision making uh, process you are just informing that we are doing this that is called informing second is a consultation here you call the people you only consult that means you ask people what is their requirement but you don't ask what is what is the solution and what you are doing actually your decision about the problem you are not sharing that with the people so you are listening to them but uh, it is not mandatory that you are not uh, you are addressing or you are complying their requirement or not so it is just one way communication between the citizen and the city authority so informing and consultation is also not complete participation in true sense number 5 in this ladder in this uh, situation is the in this uh, uh, series is the placation placation is something uh, that uh, for example uh, there is a huge demand of a road or a uh, or a uh, school in a in a ward or in a uh, borough or in a particular area so placation is you call people you listen to them and uh, for all the requirements and the demand you construct or do or implement only some part of the project as a token so you don't do the every part of the project just to show that you have listened to them you are doing maybe 5% 10% of a token uh, of a small part of the project that is called placation that means in 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 place of the whole project you are um, you are either misleading them or you are doing only a small part of the project so this three element application consultation and information is called tokenism so again tokenism is not the complete is basically incomplete participation okay so earlier we have seen that manipulation and therapy is a non participation and then informing consultation and application is the incomplete participation but after that if you are willing to partner to 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 listen to them to address their problem you can make partnership with them the meaning of partnership is that you make them partner to do some development project for example i know there are several urban local bodies in india they make citizens group as a partner and they involve them in the day to day supervision after some essential training uh, so that municipality and people they have joint responsibility of the quality and the timely construction of some infrastructure so this is called partnership it can be done in social sector economic sector or any other sector also so partnership is a very good form of uh, participation and this is giving actually the citizens power after the partnership there are also examples of delegation of power where you delegate some amount of the power to the people for example we have discussed earlier the concept of ward committee in the ward committee actually many municipalities and urban local gov uh, government they have delegated the power to the ward committee to collect their local taxes so ward committee on behalf of urban local bodies they collect their local taxes and after keeping a so small amount of share of the taxes for the day to day ru running of the ward office and the local activities the remaining amount they transfer to the municipal office so that is a kind of power delegation and this is very important so this ensures partnership and delegation of power both and the 
extreme example of the citizens participation could be citizens control. If a municipal office fails to uh, perform uh, at their expectation, the citizen can, uh, can take the last call either to continue the, the municipal office or to discontinue the municipal office through their elections. And you can involve them from the very beginning in the planning and the execution stage of the project by partnership, by delegated power. In that, uh, in that method, you will find that all the decision making at the urban local bodies will be very smooth because people will participate in the decision making, they will participate in the delegated power and their execution, they will participate in lot of other projects. So, this is please keep this in your mind if you work in urban areas, try to remember these 8 stages of the participation of the citizens. So, ideally we should practice these 3. So, we should avoid the uh, number 1 to 5 and we should practice the citizens control, delegated power and partnership. So, let us summarize today's lecture. So, today we discussed uh, various um, kinds of uh, people, how to understand the people, basic demographic dimensions, socio-cultural dimensions, economic dimensions. We have learned that uh, total population, male female breakup, um, uh, age, age and sex ratio, then the migration data, the work participation rate the economic profile in terms of the percentage in primary sector, secondary sector, tertiary sector and then the uh, group wise percentage higher income group, middle income group, lower income group and the economic weaker section. These are very important part to study the, uh, the, the people and then cultural profile, the literacy rate, the SCST population, religion, um, language etcetera is very important to know and after that we have also learned few models in the uh, participation. We mentioned that the response and participation both are very important in urban governance and participations can be done at 8 levels starting from the no participation, token participation and the ultimate participation. We have seen that partnership, delegation of the power and the citizens control are the ideal partnership which will enable you to make a stronger local government and to make a urban government very strong for the improvement of the livability. So, having said that we conclude today's lecture. The next lecture will be uh, on the community group, uh, we will see that apart from the people how to understand the various community group and what are the interlying insights of the community group so that you can govern the local government in a better way. So, thank you very much for today's lecture.